What's up guys, George Lahav here, and today I'm Maker's Best Friend, I'm going to be showing you guys a top linkage kit that was developed by a Mazel user. So David Lang from the Mazel community actually reached out to me, offering to give me a free top linkage kit for my Mazel CNC. As you know, the Mazel CNC is supposed to be an open source product so that the community can actually build and improve on the original design. So he actually made his own linkage kit for the top of it, um, hoping that it would increase on the accuracy and be a better design for the Mazel. So what I'm going to do today is show you guys what comes in his kit. Uh, it's very simple. You could probably even go out there and buy all the parts yourself. And then we do an accuracy test and show you guys how much it actually improves compared to the original Mazo design. Check it out. So this is a quick layout of everything you get in David's linkage kit. Uh, just a couple of brackets here, some plastic washers, some metal washers, and then six bolts, um, two screws, some pins with a chain attachment on it, and then he gives some more chain parts in these plastic bags here. Uh, again, everything here you can probably buy at your hardware store. Um, so again, very user friendly to go out and kind of make this stuff yourself. I'm gonna show you how this is put together and then we'll attach it to the Mazo. These two are gonna be on the edges with the hooks facing out like this. And then this is actually gonna be a center bracket. And the two with the holes that are kind of curved, these are going to be along all the edges so that something like this. And this is just a quick general design. All right, so let's actually start attaching this. So the key point is, is to make sure that these vertical pieces are actually going to be in the same plane. So what we're going to do is have this side being attached from the back, from the top on the left side, and the top, um, and then the bottom on the left side is going to be in the, on the top here. And then vice versa, right? So the bottom on the right will be on the bottom, like this, and this guy will be on the top. So this guy's on the bottom here, and this guy will be on the top right there. All right, so let's actually get to attaching this. <laughs> So to give you guys an idea of how this is going to look with the top mounted kit, um, you're going to have the hooked edges of the mounted kit aligned with the center bit on the router, leaving the bottom of the center bracket, this bottom hole should be three inches from the middle of the router. So I'm just going to make sure I measure that out before I attach the top two holes right here to the sled using a piece of 2x4. Uh, should be as simple as that. And then the chains are gonna attach to these hooks at the bottom. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these brackets from the original sled. So after cutting this piece of two by four down to two and a half inches so that it would cover these two holes and I could attach it to the sled. Um, you notice that if this was attached and you pull it towards, you're gonna have issues with the mount hitting the corners of this two by four. I'm just gonna cut this into an angle. I'm just gonna angle these two corners uh, with the miter saw real quick. Now the task is to attach this to the block and attach that to the sled. Um, David actually provided these screws that I can screw in uh, to the piece of two by four, um, but then I need to find a way to attach it to the sled. <laughs> So the way to connect this, so first I'm gonna take all of these parts here, I'm gonna to go to the chain, and attach the provided half link like this, okay? And then I'm gonna attach the uh, chain link here, 
and then I'm going to put this guy in here. Attach this lock onto it. And then I was able to attach that just like that. This is just going to attach to the to the new mounting kit. So after doing the first test cut, everything skewed off to, kind of skewed upward and to the left. And the reason that's happening is if you look here, when I rotate this around, um, the, the sled is actually shifting the center point of the router. So I reached out to David who was the creator of this and it seems like it's actually partly, um, or I guess fully user error. And the reason is um, I think this placement of the center bar is a little bit too far up so that it isn't allowing it to rotate. I guess a good way to think about some of these mounting kits, um, including the new Mazda one that's gonna be coming out that's kind of a half circle around it, um, you want it to be uh, perfectly centered so that when the forces are pulling up and left and this is shifting, that center point of the router has to stay in the center. If it moves even a little bit, you're losing a lot of tolerance on this guy. Um, so I'm going to now uh, remove this and the way David said to check this out is taking the left uh, bar, the hook should be at the center bit and the other uh, holes will align where this should be placed. Um, so that's pretty simple enough and kind of makes it a little bit easy. Um, the one thing I have a big concern for at this point is the fact that um, I'm gonna see how far off it is. I don't think it's that far off because I tried doing that measurement already. And if there's a system where it's a little bit far off and that's skewing the whole thing because it allows it to rotate, um, even the smallest difference is screwing up your tolerance. So you have to really have that right on, hope that nothing kind of shifts with the screws, nothing um, shifts over time. Um, and to me, that is a little bit um, harder to accept as a design. Um, other than that, this is still a good design because it would remove um, vibrations coming from the router. This, this shift in the uh, mounting kit allows for a lot of the vibrations through the router to get absorbed by that sled. That's a really big point of it. So I guess you're gaining some there and you might be losing some of the tolerance based off how much of a perfectionist you are. I know he did design a mounting kit for the mounting kit, so something that should help you align it better onto the sled. Um, so as long as there's something like that, that or some template or something that really helps you nail down the placement of it, it should be a pretty good design. So let's take a look and see how far off I am on this actual cut. Okay, that'd be the center of the bit. Right. Okay, that looks like it's actually a little bit low. That little difference right there is causing the shift, I'd assume. So I'm just gonna try that real quick. So before I get started, I just thought of a pretty good test. I'm actually gonna just um, put the bit into the wood, I don't know, like uh, a tenth of an inch or something like that. And I'm just gonna rotate this um, from over here and we'll pull the sled away and we'll see if it's gonna be about that quarter inch or if it's skewed. If it's skewed, that means I still don't have it perfect. So I put the bit into the center here and I just shifted the sled first to the right and then to the left. Now I know you guys are thinking, you're gonna think that you know when I was shifting it, that's what caused it to move, but it was actually the other way around. Me holding it when it was shifting, I was able to keep it in the center. Then I let go and I saw it start to drag to the right 
and then drag to the left with the left side. Uh, so to give you an idea, this is about an inch of, of travel that can happen with the sled shifting completely from the left to the, to the right. So for, the, for those of you who are considering this um, mount kit, don't think that it's you know a terrible design just from this travel. It's not expected to actually do that when it goes from the left to the right. The bricks in the bottom should be holding it kind of steady, so it should only be traveling, I'd say, from here to about here. So you're, you're having a lot less of that one inch travel distance. And if you actually mount this the correct way, uh, based off these chains and the center of the bit, it should actually turn so that the bit is staying in the center. So again, it, it's a great design if you're trying to remove a lot of the vibrations that are caused from the router that would cause it to shift during an actual cut. Um, so this is allowing for the reduction of those vibrations. Um, unfortunately, it's not really for me at this moment because it does take kind of perfection mounting it to the sled. Um, and again, I'm gonna leave this open to you guys who do get this and who do mount it the correct way. Maybe you guys can post your results and show how uh, good of a, um, a mounting kit this can be. Um, for all of you other guys out there who want to see um, what else is out there, I am going to be receiving Maslow's new mounting kit uh, thanks to Barr and the Maslow team. So thank you guys for sending that to me. That should be one of my next videos that come out. Uh, I'll show you guys what that new design is with the ring um, and with the sliders. I'm also going to be upgrading my actual Maslow um, frame here so I can have a bar up top and I'll have the chains coming in at the opposite direction. And I got some cool products coming out, so make sure you guys check that out. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for those uh, other videos if you wanna check those out. If you enjoyed this video, um, I'm trying to be as real with you guys with my reviews as possible and not really fake anything. So go ahead and hit that like video below if you enjoyed that. Um, and as always, thanks again for watching, guys.